Bisweswar Prasad Koirala was the second son of Father Krishna Prasad Koirala and mother Divya Koirala. Koirala family were original inhabitants of Dumza village, Sindoli district, belonging to Hill Brahmin caste. His father, Krishna Prasad Koirala, had migrated from Dumza in Sindhuli district to Birat Nagar in Morang district. During the reign of Chandra Samsir, his father, Krishna Prasad Koirala, had the contract of Chandra Guns of Tarai and Gorkha customs of Ilam. His father was expelled from Sindhuli district for building the tallest house in Dumja, now Sindhuli district, and moved to Morang district. His father, Krishna Prasad, helped establish the town of Birat Nagar in Tarai, where he made his money running a series of custom posts. His father opened a school and a hospital and prompted the upliftment of women. Krishna Prasad believed that girls must ride bicycles and horses and learn to use daggers and guns. His father, Krishna Prasad, once remarked that women and men are like two wheels of a chariot and that you needed both wheels to run the chariot. With such ideas, his father, Krishna Prasad, came across the Ranas of Nepal and had to sow exile in British India. The Ranas had snatched his father from the government job Subba, saying that his father had links with the leaders of the Indian freedom struggle. Father Krishna Prasad Kwerala went Banaras as he was deported by the Rana government of Nepal. The entire Kwerala clan, all together 45 members, were forced to live in exile in Banaras, India. Since none of them had a job, it was a difficult start. While staying there in Banaras, Bisweswar Prasad Koirala was born on September 8, 1914 AD. His birth name was Churamani. But in Banaras, remembering the offering of Lord Vishwanath, his father named him Bisweswar Prasad. This is the name by which he became famous. Bisweswar Prasad had suffered a lot in his childhood. Banaras proved expensive and they moved to Saharsa district in Bihar. Bisweswar Prasad used to go to school wearing old clothes and torn sandals. He also used to sell magazines and newspaper to help his parents and to buy books at school. He went to school by eating only chickpea and water in the morning and evening. From an early age, he had the ability to listen to others and explain things to others. Influential international personality of the time included Kamal Pasa of Turkey, Dr. Sen Yat-sen Rise in China, the Communist Movement in Soviet Russia, and the establishment of Japan as a power nation had a profound effect on his life. World War II, the rise and fall of Hitler in Germany took place in the same period. He was politically active during the nationally and internationally unstable and cold war between the two poles. Until he was 14 years old, BP studied in a school established by his father. Afterwards, he joined Harish Chandra school in the city. He began writing from the ninth grade and his writing started to get published in the Indian newspaper. Childhood and political life began when the Indian independence movement that was going on in India at that time. He became involved in the Indian independence movement because of the belief that the Rana Empire could not be eradicated from Nepal as long as the British Empire remained in India. Bipi, a born rebel, was the first boy in his class to respond to the call of Mahatma Gandhi to boycott the classes of the government school. Young B.P. Koyala's boldness brought him into notice and even Mahatma Gandhi was impressed by his fearlessness. In 1930, the British Raj charged him and his brother Matrika Prasad Koyala for having contacts with terrorists. He was arrested in connection with Motihari conspiracy case while he was still a student of 9th class. He was again arrested for taking active part in the labor strike in Darbanga. Due to their involvement in the movement, Bisweswar Prasad Koirala and his brother Matrika Prasad Koirala was imprisoned in Hazari Bagh prison in India by the British government for three months in 1930. 
in 1932-80, he completed his higher secondary education in Banaras. He then completed his bachelor's degree in politics and economics from Banaras Hindu University and his master's degree from Calcutta University. After completing his studies, he settled in Darjeeling and worked in the legal profession for a long time. Despite being a student, he was close to politics. While living in Darjeeling, India as a lawyer, he became acquainted with the well-known writer Surya Vikram Gyawali. With Surya Vikram Gyawali help, his first story, Chandra Vadan, was published from Darjeeling in 1992 BS or 1935 AD. After that, he started working in the field of literature. He was married to Susila, the daughter of Kamal Prada, the governor of Chapa. Even after getting married, BP's financial situation was very poor. He married by lending 4 to 500 rupees from his friend Devendra. The parents were not present at BP's wedding. They married in 1936 AD. Susila Korala was born in 1923 AD. A trained Varad Natyam and Kathak dancer, Susila Korala made use of her dancing skills to earn money for the family during difficult times. She gave birth to three sons and two daughters. In 1939, BP's first story in Nepali, Indra Badan, was published in a monthly paper, Sarada. The story immediately gripped the attention of many people and sent shockwaves throughout the literary circle of Nepal. The story was experimental, unconventional and unlike most previous Nepali stories that are based on myth and are symbolic, Indra Vadan addressed issues that are still taboo in Nepali society. BP was actively associated with the famous Quit India movement in 1942. He worked amongst the British Gorkha soldiers in Dehradun, instigating them to defy the orders to suppress the nationalist movement in India. Subsequently, he was arrested and deported to Central Jail, Hazari Bagh in 1942, where he spent about three years. He, for the first time, suffered throat cancer in the prison, which ultimately proved disastrous. His father died in the Rana prison in Kathmandu, in 1945-80. He founded the Nepali National Congress in 1947, which later becomes the Nepali Congress. The British had to leave India. India became independent. The Indian movement also had an effect on Nepal. Nepali people also wanted to be free from the atrocities committed by Rana in Nepal. Feeling the need of an organization, BP published his article in Shirtslight in Patna asking people interested in bringing democracy in Nepal to come in contact with him. With this news, interested Nepalese started approaching BP. It was decided to open a committee in Vanaras. An organization was born in India to bring democracy to Nepal. This committee also met Nepalese living in every corner of India. At the same time, Ganesh Man and BP also had meetings. The 13-member committee was chaired by Tanka Prasad Acharya. The party was named the National Congress. There was also a labor movement in Nepal. BP came to Biratnagar to go on a strike at Biratnagar Jute Mill and the first trade union was formed and went on strike. He was imprisoned for one year by the government of Nepal in 1947 on charge of leading the Biratnagar workers movement. After being kept in Dhankuta, he was brought to Kathmandu on foot via Kathmandu, Bhospur, Okaldunga, Ramechap, Kavri. At that time, he was imprisoned in Nakhuzel. He resorted fast unto death for 29 days, demanding facilities to the prisoners in jail. He then went on a hunger strike in jail and was released from prison by the Rana under the pressure from Mahatma Gandhi. The Rana were divided into A, B and C class. Suvarna Samshir was taken out by Juddha Samshir. Suvarna Samshir took the lead as the founder of Nepali Prajatantra Congress. Mohan Samshir banned the parties. 
BP had come to Nepal underground to reform the party but was arrested and imprisoned. Here too, BP had go on a hunger strike. After his release, BP called for a struggle to restore democracy in the country. In 1951, BP started an armed struggle to end the Rana rule in Nepal. In October 1951, the Rana regime came to an end, an agreement was reached in Delhi and a democratic government was formed. BP Koirala became Home Minister under Mohan Samsar's Prime Ministership. He resigned from the Home Ministership and started organizing mass movement demanding general election. The party, Nepali Congress, under his dynamic leadership, won the election with tumbling majority in the parliament. BP Koirala became the first ever elected Prime Minister of Nepal. During his tenure as Prime Minister, he paid friendly visit to the United Nations, India and China. The BP government rehabilitated 18,522 square quarter family in Chitwan. BP had admitted in the case of Birta abolition. The BP government nationalized the forest given to the influential people as a gift by the Rana to maintain their power. Until then, there were many states and kings in the country. States like Mustang, Galkot, Jazarkot, Salyan, Putan, Dulu, Durna, Basura, Bazang had their own courts, law and police. Many parallel states existed within the country. Poor people were being exploited. When a child was born or even at the wedding, homes had to pay to the ruler. The BP government formed the Dulu State Court, Gulmi Jazar Court, Dang, Bazang, Falwang, Galkot State Courts and Gahar Kun Court on June 20, 2017 and formed area courts. The BP government registered very well against the King of Bazang. King Mahendra wanted to take over the monopoly of power by overthrowing the people elected government under one pretext or another. King Mahendra took the feudal lords in hand who were irritated by the decisions of BP, including the abolition of state royalty. BP, during his short tenure in the office, introduced several reforms programs at home and successfully enlarged contact with the outside world. He established diplomatic relations with many more countries of the world, including Pakistan and Israel. It was BP who successfully formulated modern Nepal's foreign policy of equal friendship with all the countries. He negotiated border settlement with its northern neighbor China on the one hand and trade and transit treaty and other agreements with southern neighbor India. His government lasted only 18 months. In 15 December 1960 AD, King Mahendra used his prerogative to dissolve the then constitution of Nepal, the government and the government of BP Koyala. After that, Leaders, including BP, were arrested and were imprisoned for eight years without any trial. Parties were banned. King Mahendra did not listen to the pressure of the international community. BP went on a hunger strike as there was no facility for political prisoners to read newspaper, stay with political prisoners, play games, meet visitors, and go to the court of justice. The government did not provide the facility to go to the court, but other demands were provided by the government. BP was also against the panchayat system. For this, he was jailed for eight years at Sundari Jail. During his eight years of stay in Sundari Jail's prison, he got a good chance to read and write. He wrote many books at that time. While staying in Sundari Jail, jail for eight years, BP fell ill. He was released in the month of Kartik 2027 BS for treatment. After receiving treatment in India, BP returned to Nepal, but after the treatment in India was not enough, BP demanded a passport to go to Europe. But the Nepalese government did not give it. Realizing the armed revolution to restore democracy in the country, an armed revolution took place under the leadership of BP, but the revolution was not successful. 
BP's stay in India was made difficult by Indira Gandhi's expansionist policies. Fearing that the country would not survive, BP came to Nepal on the 16th of Paus, 2033 BS or 1976 AD, with the policy of national reconciliation. On his return to Nepal, BP was charged with treason and was arrested. In 2034 BS or 1977 AD, King Birendra released BP Koyala saying that he would go to United States for treatment and would receive treatment at the government's expense. BP returned to Nepal via India after undergoing treatment. Due to international pressure, the government dropped all charges against him in 1978 AD. BP was kept under house arrest during 1979 AD or 2036 BS movement. Biswaswar Prasad had cancer in his throat. He also traveled to India, the United Kingdom and the United States for treatment of cancer. During that time, he visited many countries of the world. He also died of throat cancer. He died at the age of 68 in Charbahal, Kathmandu on June 21, 1982 AD or 2039 BS. More than 50,000 people had gathered at his funeral. If you look at the life of BP, it is not enough to just look at his political contribution. His literary contribution should also be started. Chandravadan was his first story in Nepali. In Nepali language literature, he made new use of psychological stories. Swet Vairab, Dosi Chasma can be studied as BP's stories work and many other stories can also be read in various magazines. Teen Ghumti, Narendra Dai, Somnima, Modi Ain, Hitler Ra Yahudi, Ra Babu Amara Chora are BP's novels. Apart from these novels, BP has left behind his invaluable works like his stories, prison journals, autobiographies, etc. In the novel Teen Gumti, the context of the love affair between the two and the sexual psychology of both is analyzed. The essence of this novel is that love makes a person feel close even though one is physically far away. So Nima is a novel brought into controversy by the followers of Kirat religion. The Kirat accused of insulting Sumnima and Parohang as they are deities of the Kirat religion. Narendra Dai is a psychological novel. This novel analyzes the intimate family relation between Narendra Dai and his wife. The novel Hitler or Yahudi is based on the story of the German dictator Hitler who imprisoned and killed millions of innocent Jews in a gas chamber. B.P. Koyala, who introduced sexual psychology into Nepal language literature, is also credited with being a literary man who made new use of psychological stories. B.P. Koyala was not a believer. He practiced atheism or the doctrine of godlessness. B.P. Koyala had strong influence of Marxism and Gandhism. BP's famous saying are as follows. Being a critic requires a lot of knowledge and skills. It doesn't matter if you have a black hat on your head or not. In fact, culture is a human behavior. I believe in universal culture. In literature, even the emperor is naked. Literature is a symbol of civilization. Literature is the highest philosophy born of the fusion of music and emotion. I am not against religion at all, but everyone knows that I do not practice any religion. To try to call a dictatorial system a democracy is to try to cover one untruth with another. I am not an economic expert, but the development that leaves the rural people behind is not development at all. Say country or nation, it is not geography, it is really the people. The foundation of the nation will not be strong until any section of the society experience injustice. We must defeat our opponents on the basis of principle. We should not compromise with anyone by abandoning our principles. 
Without democracy, the country will not exist. The king will not exist, nothing to speak about us. Nationality is not the soul. It is the collective feeling and opinion of the people. Life itself is a sure risk. The development of the country is not possible without the development of our village. Therefore, when planning, the Nation Planning Commission should keep a photo of a poor farmer plowing the land along with the photo of the king, keeping in mind what is being done for his benefit. Nation is the people. Nationality is the feeling of the people. We do not allow democracy to be killed in the name of socialism and we do not accept exploitation in the name of democracy. Socialism is communism. Democracy is added to that. And communism is socialism in which democracy is withdrawn. I want complete change. I want social change. I want economic change. My fight is to eradicate poverty here. Let there be a small house for all Nepalese, a farm to work, a milking cow, let the children go to school, get health care. This is socialism in context of Nepal. Democratic socialism is the social justice within democracy. Democracy and nationality are interdependent. Nationality is the gift of democracy. The constitution is a document for the welfare of poor farmers and workers. With the advent of democracy, the opportunists will be in control of the country. Honest and selfless cadres will have to fight against them once again. On the question of nationality, my neck is connected with the king. Whether it is on the field or not, whether the goal is scored by the king or us, our fight is for democracy. To be a king, he also needs a country. Democracy and socialism are the goals and ideals of Nepali Congress. Farmers should have the right to cultivate the land. I am not satisfied until the farmers have the right to cultivate the land. Thank you.